Thank you guys for joining us today. And let's talk about uh, real-time data synchronization between an RDBMS and Neo4j between, uh, with Debezium and Kafka. My name is Alexander Sade, is Alfredo Rubin, and I'm a junior consultant engineer here at Neo4j. More precisely, I work inside the professional services team. Yeah, same here, uh, working for the professional services at Neo4j and helping customers uh, succeed with their projects. Okay, so in this session, we're gonna talk about how we can integrate Neo4j with an existing architecture. Typically, when you have a graph use case, you want to replicate some data from a data store to Neo4j without having to replace any database or having to um, have some major changes inside your code base. We implemented this kind of technology for different customers uh, right now, and we want to share with you some of the best practices we brought back from the field. So first of all, why it's so hard? This may sound trivial, but keeping data stores in sync is not easy to productionize. This because things will go wrong at some point in production. You may have infrastructure issues, or you may have to do some upgrades and so on. Also, batch uh, data replication uh, is just not good enough if you want to have real-time streaming and you want to avoid too much coupling between the services in your architecture. This is where Chain Data Capture comes in your help. Chain Data Capture, or CDC for short, um, is a... Um, can you change the slide, Nicola, please? Thank you. Uh, Chain Data Capture, or CDC for short, is a technology that um, streams the events that are occurring inside a database uh, at a low level by parsing the transaction log. So uh, whenever you will have uh, a creation, an update, or a deletion inside your database, uh, the Chain Data Capture system will get this uh, event and stream it to an event bus. In this case, uh, in our case, Apache Kafka. So uh, many vendors offer this kind of CDC solution. However, we want to focus in this session on Debezium, an open source project. Debezium is built on top of Kafka. More precisely, it's built on top of Kafka Connect, uh, a component of Apache Kafka that serves as a, as a data integration hub. The strength of Debezium is that instead of querying the RDBMS, asking for the updates, it reads in append mode uh, the transaction log of the database. It's also easy to learn and set up, and most importantly, it's agentless. This means that you don't need any kind of agent installed in the machine where the database is currently running. And why is it good? First of all, it is reliable. Kafka offers an asynchronous and log-based message system. This means that if uh, Kafka is unavailable, the uh, data replication process will resume from the last transaction it read, and if Neo4j is, uh, for some kind of reason, not available, um, the data replication process will resume from the last message that Kafka Connect consumed. Then this technology is distributed. Both Kafka Connectors and Kafka Brokers offer a good scalability. We can scale up and down easily our infrastructure without any downtime. And also Kafka offers a cluster mode that offers to our architecture uh, a better resiliency and fault tolerance. Then this technology is fast. This is because Debezium has a high polling frequency of the transaction log, and it also reads in append mode, uh, making it even more responsive. Also Kafka is performant. The typical latency measured in the network is around 100 milliseconds, but this also depends on how much data you are flowing through Kafka. In the end, this technology offers, this architecture offers a great isolation because it helps us achieving loose coupling by removing the responsibility from each microservice to talk with each other by relying directly on Kafka itself. So let's now take a quick look on uh, an example on how we can set up uh, a CDC data flow. So everything starts from the source of our data. In our case, an RDBMS. And whenever something happens in the RDBMS, the Bizium will, uh, will see the event occurring in the transaction log and will produce a message regarding their event to Kafka. For the way the Bizium works, we will have one topic for each table is subscribed to. So if the Bizium is subscribed to 10 tables, it will produce 10 topics inside Kafka. Meanwhile, we have another Kafka Connect instance that, which has installed the new 4J plugin that is also subscribed to the topics where Debezium is 
producing the messages. So when DBZ produces a message, the, um, the other Kafka Connect will consume that message and push some data to Neo4j. The, um, the final destination of our change data capture. And um, let's now take, um, no, it's also important to note this, sorry, that uh, for, the, for the way the new 4J plugin works, um, we will need one Cypher query for each topic the connector is subscribed to. So if we have 10 topics, we will have um, 10 Cypher queries to manage inside the Kafka connector. So let's now take a quick look on at one example of a message that Dibisium can produce. As you can see, the message is in JSON format and th this message represents um, the creation of, um, of a row inside the, a table called customers inside a MySQL database. We can understand this from three, different, uh, from three main fields. The first one, it's called OP and it represents the kind of operation that uh, of the event. In this case, it's a creation and from the C character. And we also have the before and after field. Before and after represent, as the name says, the state before and after the event occurred. So before a creation, we don't have nothing represented by a null. And after that, we have something. In this case, a customer number, a name, a phone, and a country. The message also has other metadata that we omitted for this kind of session because there was just too much data. Before I leave the words to Nicola, I just want to share with you some resources to kickstart your adventure with um, this kind of technology. We also offer an end-to-end -end example from MySQL to Neo4j, which I personally developed. I'm always updating that repository, so keep an eye on that. And right now we also offer um, a demo from a Mongo cluster to Neo4j. I will now leave the words to Nicola that will guide you through some of the best practices we brought back from the field. Thanks, Alfredo. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, it's about a couple of things to keep in mind when setting up this kind of architecture. Um, uh, delivery um, is usually expected, uh, what's expected during normal operations is exactly one delivery, meaning one uh, transaction or one change in the table will translate into one event. And uh, that happens in order. So that, uh, you, you are guaranteed to have the, the same mes the message, the messages arriving in the, the same order they've been inserted into the, the database. However, when things go wrong, sometimes it happens, uh, it's possible to receive the, the same event twice. Uh, so keep that in mind. It means that within the Cypher queries you use in the, um, in the configuration of the Neo4j Kafka Connect plugin, you need to use merge instead of create and what goes along with it, uh, the constraints uh, to, to avoid creating the same um, entity twice. Transforms, uh, usually database transactions uh, spread over several tables. So, and that generates many different uh, CDC events. Uh, in this example here, we have a, a, an order being inserted, inserted into the database. Then you would have three rows, one in the, the order table and two in the, the child table. Uh, and that would generate three different events into two different topics. So you can have some cases where you could want to replicate only confirmed orders or convert the amount in another currency or whatever else. You can do that. Uh, and you can do some, some simple transforms in Cypher queries or in Dipizium, but it's not necessarily the best place to do it. Uh, there are safer ways to handle this. Um, this is very good for uh, simple things. When it gets more complex than that, uh, it's better to, to use Kafka to do that because it's a very uh, capable tool for, for doing transformation and streaming ETL. Uh, you could use, for example, KSQL to uh, have a logical view over different topics or write some custom transform code as a custom connectors to, to apply some business logic. 
you can use uh, CDC to replicate the whole content of a, of a table. It's not limited to just reacting some, to, to some changes. You can even, uh, at some point, replicate the whole database from scratch. Uh, this is called snapshotting in Divisium. However, uh, keep in mind that when there's a huge amount of data to be, re to be replicated, this may not be the most performant approach. Uh, you, you could rather be using new 4 mean import or um, directly use database drivers if you need high performance um, to do that initial load. Um, because obviously it avoids uh, the data to flow through the whole queuing system. That's, uh, that's faster. Transaction locking is, can be also an issue. Um, We've been stating that we can have multiple instances of the plugin that write at the same time to Neo4j. So if you have heavy workloads, you may face a locking issue uh, updating the same nodes. Um, the Neo4j Kafka plugin has a retry mechanism to handle that, but you might have to tune a bit uh, the configuration to limit the amount of uh, concurrency in the, the, the number of instances that are currently running, or maybe address that as well in the um, data model. Uh, you could be willing to change that a bit. Uh, finally, as a, as a best practice, uh, in general, when it comes to big data, try to have some mechanical sympathy. Uh, we've been seeing some JSON even payloads, um, and th that can be pretty verbose. So it's better when you have a lot of data to use a more compact binary format like Avro to do that. Um, Real-time replication, when you have this use case, uh, it's important to keep in mind to monitor the lag, uh, meaning the, the number of messages in transit uh, through Kafka, because if it grows a lot, it means that you are running behind. Um, and you probably want to set up alerting, uh, so in case there's a hiccup somewhere or an infrastructure issue, uh, you can react quickly to it. Also, uh, keep in mind a couple of things for uh, around deployment. Uh, there are different variants of the Neo4j connector available. First, there is the Neo4j streams plugin. Uh, this one is now deprecated, uh, so prefer the, the Neo4j Kafka Connect plugin, make sure to pick this one. And even for that one, you need to pick the, the right version, uh, meaning depending if you deploy on the Confluent hosted platform or within a, a plain open source Kafka distribution cluster, uh, you, there are slight differences in the dependencies and you want to, uh, to pick the right version to <clears throat> make the whole thing work correctly. And last thing, around database configuration, you will at some point need to, to change it a bit. Um, Dibisium requires uh, to have transactional access, some specific privileges. So configuration wise, you need to adapt to that. And of course, this varies depending on your setup. Uh, if you use, for example, a hosted service such as um, RDS from Amazon, or um, yeah, you can, you need to, to adapt the, the configuration to the database to use and the, the service you use. And I think that's it. Uh, maybe we have some space uh, for questions. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, I hope to see uh, a couple of emoji reactions now in chat, uh, claps or hearts or thumbs ups. Um, and we have some time for questions. So um, if anybody has, uh, has any questions for Alfredo and Nicola, please, uh, please type in the chat now. Um, that would be, uh, would be your time. Um, otherwise, I guess uh, the usual ways uh, that are always open are the community forums and the Discord server for questions around anything uh, Neo4j related. Um, uh, here we go. One question from Dennis. Let's take this one then. Do we need to worry about persistence in Debezium if we are syncing everything to Neo? Um, I can give it a try. Uh, mm -hmm. So actually, 
Gibesium is not persisting anything by itself. It's uh, taking the transaction log content and sending that to, to Kafka. So the persistence is really happening within the, the Kafka topics. Uh, and that's that's where it's good because you, you are actually guaranteed if you have a cluster and HA uh, to, to not lose any content there. Cool. Uh, thank you for that. I see no more questions. I see lots of lots of love for you too. So thank you very much for uh, for presenting and for uh, for your talk. Uh, very appreciated. And uh, um, yeah, thank you uh, uh, for for speaking. Thank you very much. Thank you.